The GBS Control is a project that has transformed an affordable, yet limited, video upscaler to something that's a powerful tool for retro enthusiasts. It all started with the GBS 8200, an inexpensive Chinese scaler designed for use in arcade cabinets and with vintage video game consoles. While it offered basic functionality to upscale video signals from arcade machines and consoles, it did have its issues, mostly really poor latency and video quality, which kept it from truly meeting the needs of the average retro enthusiast. Then came the GBS Control project, an open source firmware upgrade that completely revamped the GBS 8200's capabilities. With the GBS Control, enthusiasts can connect an ESP8266 or an ESP32 microcontroller and effectively give the GBS a brain upgrade. This dramatically reduces latency, improves color accuracy, and offers features like customizable resolutions, scan lines, and even remote control from a web interface. Thanks to the GBS control community, what was once a budget scaler has become a genuinely powerful tool for anyone looking to bring classic gaming and hardware into the modern display era. My use case is to allow me to capture video when I'm doing repairs on vintage machines so that my videos stop looking like this and start looking more like this. I bought a VC9900 and I bought that quite some time ago. I tried to get it to work with not a lot of success. It then got relegated to the pile of things I'll probably get to doing another time, maybe, and was forgotten about. At this point, I knew nothing of GBS control. Though this board isn't one that's explicitly listed on the wiki for GBS control, it seemed similar enough to give this a punt. So I basically have most of the things I need kicking about the HBR HQ. The only thing I don't have is the microcontroller, the ESP8266. But I found one of those on eBay for a very, very reasonable three pounds, including shipping, which seems somewhat cheap, but it turned up and apart from the damage in shipping, it looks absolutely fine. Bending these pins back shouldn't really cause me any big problem. Sponsors of this video are PCB Way. They provide PCB prototype fabrication from as little as $5. They also have a huge library of shared projects. And if you're not confident with a soldering iron, you can even get them to assemble them for you. PCB Way also have CNC machining and 3D printing services. All of this is available at PCBWay.com. Thanks PCB Way for sponsoring this video. The first thing in the instructions, um, links in the description, on the GBS control wiki is to remove and bypass the three pots on the RGB input. I'm definitely going to be taking a less destructive approach than is depicted in the wiki because I've got the tools and I can. So, Moogun at the ready, we can remove these pots quite simply and replace them with simple links. I'm going to be putting some heat shrink over the links for nothing other than aesthetics. I suppose it makes them a bit more obvious that I've put something there, but really there's no value added, it just looks nicer in my opinion.
The next step is connecting the debug pin. I'm making all the connections in this case using DuPont cables as I have a huge box of them that seems to keep growing. The debug signal is a single connection sourced from pin 30 of IC6, which is the MTV230 microcontroller. This chip, originally designed for embedded applications in LCD screens, serves as the stock brains of the GBS upscaler. In the GBS control modification, the MTV230 is overridden by the ESP8266. This allows the ESP8266 to take direct control of the Tivia TrueView 5725 video processor, the component responsible for the core video processing tasks such as the scaling and converting of input signals to the desired output format. And as I have the correct connectors for these, I'm just going to make some cables up with some more DuPont cables. And this should make it very easy to connect this to the ESP8266. So I've made up one 4-pin and one 2-pin, the 2-pin is just for power. I can now hook these up to the Node MCU ESP8266 using the instructions and diagram provided in the GBS Control Wiki. I will put some instructions that are more specific to this model and my journey on my website and I'll add those links to the description below along with links to the GBS Control Wiki and any other information that's useful. You'll also notice that I haven't gone for the clock generator or any of the optional items like OLED displays and rotary encoders. And I might very well add these later on, but at the moment I want to make sure this actually works before we invest any more time modifying it. Installing the software, just follow the instructions. If you read them carefully, do lead you to the right result. These initial tests are connected to my A500, and I'm just cycling through the ROMs that I've got on my ROM switcher, including Diagram, which gives us something quite pretty to look at. quick test booting from a disk, we can get grind running and that looks okay. The only problem is that this is two devices loosely held together by some bits of wire and it's not very usable. So I need to mount these on something. My plan is to create a single board that I can mount these to. I'm going to make that out of the plastic I have left over from the A2000 under tray, which is now surplus to requirements seeing as it was too thick. I'm basically going to mark out what I'm going to cut and where I'm going to drill and then I'm going to attach these two boards to it. This whole thing was less than £25, about $30, making it a very affordable solution, especially when you consider the price of an open source scan converter or a retro tank. If you found this video any combination of useful and or entertaining, then please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're here, why don't you check this video out next?